Before we get into this episode of the HGO Podcast, we've got a couple things to mention. We had a couple of recording issues this episode, which means that there are no cameras and we've had to do a lot of editing to the audio. So this is a strictly audio episode this week. Apologies for that. We'll make it up to you next week. I'm sure everything will be fixed. Uh, I was also ill during the recording of this episode, so I'm not here for a majority of it. But if you do want to hear my impressions, I have recorded a little 10 minute, 15 minute section at the end just for you to get uh, all of your impressions from me as well. So enjoy the episode. And yeah, let's talk all about Persona 3 reload hey how's it going everybody welcome back to another episode of the hgo podcast my name is kyle and joining me as always is my good buddy hunter how are you doing man oh i'm doing just swell yeah unfortunately no ethan this week he's had a bit of bit of some issues come up so he caught the persona fever (laughs) yeah he got the got the persona sickness unfortunately which... Oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's a shame though because i think he was looking forward to this episode i know i've been yeah. p3 reload it this is one that when this was announced even when it like got leaked this was something i was super looking forward to yeah me too i was excited since i haven't played it yet and yeah this is probably the best version oh you know. absolutely <laughs> I've got no way to scientifically prove it because I won't be playing portable FES or the original version, but I'm just going to say it's the best version. (laughs) Well, I can tell you. Hands down, like, audience, if you just want a TLDR and dip two minutes into this episode, this is the definitive way to play Persona 3. Like, no. Please don't don't do that. Listen to more of the show. (laughs) If you want more, stay tuned. But, I mean, no questions asked. This is undoubtedly the best way to play this video game there's just been so many good quality of life changes to it it's like the all the voice work we'll get we'll get to all of that later but man this version just makes me happy dude i'm so glad we've got it Uh, yeah Uh, Yeah, it is quite pleasing but anyways before we get into all of that does ethan still do spiels i'll be honest i kind of zone out when it in the intro. I think we st- I think we started phasing those out, so we can just get right to it. Yeah, yeah, just c- cut to the chase. Subscribe, follow us on Twitter, you know how it goes. But yeah, Persona 3 Reload finally with us. Now, Hunter, you have not played the original in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, none of the previous versions of the game. This is a fresh Persona 3 experience for me. I'm glad to finally play the first Persona game. <laughs> Dude, congrats. It's weird that they started with 3. Very Star Wars of them. Yeah, you know. Um, uh, but I I have played the original, or I played FES, and I grew actually grew up with it as well. I didn't play it growing up, but I did. I watched a Let's Play because that's how I learned about video games as a kid watching youtube let's plays i didn't know anything about persona at the time i'd never even heard of it but i just checked it out because i liked the dude's content when i was growing up and i'm like this is actually really cool and the whole thing just really captivated me through the whole thing yeah for sure uh it definitely makes a good introduction here i liked it's just the whole vibe at the start was a lot of fun as far as walking through the station and the coffins and all of that. I'm like, oh, oh, I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. That, it's cool that you actually got to like play that part, like walking up to the dorm. Because in the in FES, that was just a cutscene. That was just an anime cutscene. Oh, really? Of Protag walking up to the dorms, listening to his iPod. Sick. But yeah, getting to actually like see all the coffins and like the dark hour. That's so cool. Um, so as a first time player hunter, what are like, what are some things that are, how are you feeling on, on this game so far? I guess how far, how far have you gotten into it? Uh, I just did the first major boss fight not too long ago. I haven't been back to Tartarus since then, but, uh, I've just been doing other stuff and now they're harassing me about exams and all that typical. Yeah. Persona school life hoopla. So I'm not, I'm not too far ahead of you then. Um. I did the first full moon boss and then got to the... I climbed up back to the next checkpoint of Tartarus. That's what I intend to do next. 
Yeah. Um, I would say if you are going to do that, hold off because you are going to get your next party member after exams. Yeah. So all if right. you just want to climb up with him and once all the exams are done. Oh, very cool. I will say one weird thing. There, are some, it's a uh, maybe it's just because I feel like uh, it's been forever since I've played four, and then I feel like five just shotgunned like a lot of uh, social links at you real quick. Mm-hmm. So it's been a little. I f- I feel like I've been having less of those to do. In a manner where I'm like suspicious that I'm missing something. It's I think pro- I think I've rationalized this to oh it hasn't given me any of the ones for my party members to hang out with yet, mm-hmm. which is weird in its own right. But Dude, this game is know. so stingy about your party member social links. Yeah, like all I think all all of them, all three of them are like like at least with the females party members, they're all like gated off by high social stat requirements yeah like i think i talked to mitsuro in passing once in the hallway at school and it's like oh she won't even pay attention to me unless i'm a genius oh something. yeah and i'm like <laughs> i was like ah oh, dude that was cool. that was a really funny text box to read it just uh, felt very self-defeating like oh well maybe if i was a genius she would talk to me <laughs> yeah oh, but, it just amused me and it hasn't even given me like anything for as far as talking to Yukari about oh you need to be this much or blah 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 yet either. It's just been like oh she's has the random oh hey how you doing yeah and then you move on with your life dialogue so far. But, Dude, Yukari sounds um, like super stingy. <laughs> she's hers unlocks like about midway into the game. But it's like, at that point, you've already done so much with her. You freaking live with her. Yeah, Why is she being so stingy about opening up to me? Yeah, that's the funny thing. It's like, I feel like I have a... I, I feel like at this point, at a certain point, it's going to feel like I'm not going to get much more insight into these characters via their social links. I'll just know everything about them already. <laughs> yeah, but for sure. I'm willing to see where it goes, because... Yeah, and the other ones so far have been on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I'm already at like rank six for the old couple. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. I'm like, oh, it's super easy to do since they're open like every day except for Monday. <laughs> so I'm already at like rank six with them. I'm like sick. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. Mm. And then I've and then I've just been hitting the ones that have been presenting themselves as they come. All of your school pal, yeah. Well, Join the track pals. team, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the one, the other guy, Kenji. Kenji. Is this? He's a character. Is Kenji? Is Kenji different than Ken, or is this? Yes. Because I heard of a dude named Ken yeah. before this game came out that no one likes. Yeah. And I was just curious. And why? Okay. Follow up question. Why? Why are they named that? <laughs> Who did that? Why? I don't know, man. I don't have an answer for you. It'd be like if Yusuke and Yosuke were in the same game. Uh, <laughs> dude, please, no. I get them confused enough. <laughs> or like Adachi uh, and Akechi. Oh, that one's not that bad. <clears throat> They've got a whole middle syllable that's different. I guess. Uh... But yeah, um, social link presentation in this game has also been upped from previous games. They're all fully voice acted now, which is really cool. Yeah, I feel like I've been hearing people talk to me in this one even more than like hanging out with them in five. Dude, <laughs> you're part- <laughs> what? in Tartarus, dude, your party members talk so much. Oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of because I do the typical thing where it's like, oh, I'm just going as far as I can get this time i'm not coming back here <laughs> kind of thing so you know eventually i was hitting the later floors and i was running out of stamina and like every at the end of every fight mitsuro was like uh iori is running out of stamina don't push yourself and i'm like <laughs> dude shut up watch me 
I'm going to climb to the top out of spite right now. You got Vietnam flashbacks to Somnium Files. A later <laughs> Clark telling me to go back. <laughs> you only have 200 seconds left, Agent Date. <laughs> So what are your thoughts on the story so far from what you've seen? I there hasn't yeah. really been too I, I feel like I haven't really gotten into the a whole lot of it yet. Like uh but it's it feels like it's set up to go somewhere interesting at least, like the whole uh um the mysterious child or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, he's vaguely threatening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I he's think like... Go on, Hunter. Oh, I was going to say, it's like him showing up while you're half asleep is like the equivalent of, a, you know, a, the Christmas carol when uh, <laughs> Scrooge's old old partner is like, you're about to be visited by three ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the same vaguely threatening nonsense. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I've never thought of it like that, but <laughs> you're not incorrect. <laughs> oh, uh, that's why I love working with you, man. <laughs> uh, you should but... teach me new ways to look at things in life. Oh, uh, that's what I'm here for. But as far as uh it did a good job at like presenting the premise real quick. That's one thing is because of them introducing like the whole club all together. Mm -hmm. I feel like unless they just get weird about it later in the story, it's preventing the thing where it's like, oh, it's this character's turn, and then we forget about them later. Yeah, kind of thing that happens mm -hmm. with you know later on in the later games like four and five. Yeah. You know, where it's like, oh, you had your chapter, you go to the background now. Yeah. <laughs> your arc or, is done. Or like, you barely get a chapter and we're going to forget about you. <laughs> we're going to have a cat overshadow you in your own chapter. <laughs> Sorry, Haru. <laughs> Sorry, Haru. <laughs> At least but yeah, it feels like spinoff games. It's true. I mean, but it feels like the uh, way it's structured is going to prevent something like that because, you know, I've already. At least, at the very least, I've met like four other people at this point with Mitsuru and Yukari and Akihiko and Junpei. Mm. So that is something I do. I really do love the cast of characters in this game. I think of the new Persona trilogy, this is probably my favorite cast out of all of them. Mm. I just like every character. Just feels like they have. You'll get to it. You'll see what I'm talking about later, but it does feel like every character gets to have their moment and their reason for being in the story. Yeah, that's good. And the story itself is kind of a slow burn at the start where you're kind of just doing things, not really sure what kind of ramifications it's going to have. But uh, of course, as it goes on, everything kind of starts to unfold and become more clear as to as to what's going on yeah i'm interested to see where that goes um given the just theming of the game so far i'm sure it'll be <laughs> great oh yeah dude i think this uh, is like one of the first games i've ever played where when you boot it up there's like a trigger warning at the start where it's like oh yeah was that in the original version no, um, wasn't in the original. Mm. It just went in. It just said, this is a work of fiction, and moved on. Yeah, because... Yeah, I noticed that, like, a, a couple days ago when I downloaded that Silent Hill game they dropped, they had a similar thing. I think the first time I remember that happened oh, in the Doki Doki Literature Club. Oh. So, Interesting. people have taken to been doing that for a while, it seems, but, you know... I don't know if I've just uh, never paid attention to that. It was it was just interesting to see it. Yeah, it was like, oh. And I guess, yeah, um, given how you yeah, activate your persona in this game, it's a fair warning. It, this game wins best activation, by the way. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's The evoker thing is so metal. It's great. It goes like persona three, and then five with the masks. Four is stinky. <laughs> yeah. I will say that uh, 
as far as uh the actual awakenings in five i still like the visual of like the bloody mask ripping yeah but when it comes to activating them later on and just regular the cut-ins when it does the like for some reason there's going to be a gust of wind on it whoever's character's face during the cut-ins with the persona standing behind you and it's fantastic (laughs) i'm really glad that they managed to bring the cool kind of design flares from five into this in a way that makes sense yeah because it it feels like and i don't know maybe this is just because i haven't played the other ones yet but i don't feel like five's aesthetic is overpowering what they're going for here at all no i wouldn't say so um i do like what they've done with the visual style in this game and i mean i think the ps2 version has its own un- style to make it unique from this one where in fes the in so like in battle for example the your command options are all on like this little rotating wheel I and mean, it's designed like a revolver chamber to kind yeah, of like all right that's cool be like reminiscent of the evoker yeah but like it has that cool design for it <laughs> which but they've changed a lot for for this game i will say there are sometimes what i've been playing that <laughs> i've been playing reload i do kind of miss the chunky ps2 aesthetic mm. but that's just that's just nostalgia talking this game looks beautiful but and like i never doubt i never like knock this game down for for its style and like taking after for what persona 5 did all right and we're back hunter had a little bit of a hiccup there the persona sickness decided to get to his discord too yeah it happens to the best of us discord got hit with the apathy sickness oh no <laughs> their terminology for that is feels like it's meant to attack me by the way because i'm a very apathetic individual oh <laughs> so <laughs> i come down with that all the time <laughs> to a less severe extent <laughs> on that topic though you just reminded me there's i don't know if i don't remember if persona 5 or p5 royal did this or not but something this game does is that in the in the system menu for it, for it um there's a dictionary and if you're ever like oh i took like an extended break and i need a refresher on what things are on what things are in this game i just I don't I just like things think like that, that was, was i don't think that was in five no but it's a nice thing to have it is just because you know in a game that throws a lot of nouns at you at the start and just hopes you understand them yeah yeah so how are you feeling on like so the whole game got to redo a re- like an overhaul of the voice cast. What are your what are your takes on on all of this? Oh, I think the voice cast is pretty good so far. I mentioned Allegra Clark earlier. It's kind of amusing to hear her doing something that isn't an older lady because I feel like that's what she's usually playing in all the games I'm playing, where she's like some thirty some some woman in her thirties, and <laughs> now she's playing a high school kid. But, you know, she does a good enough job where it's like, oh, you know, if I didn't know better, you could be convinced, I could be convinced you're someone else. Dude, no joke. The first trailer I heard Mitsuru speak, I couldn't tell if it was, if it was Tara Platt from the original or not. Wow. Which, I'd say that's a compliment. Yeah. And the rest uh, of, the rest of C's all has really good, really good cast yeah junpei's got a bunch of good energy to him uh alejandro sab as akihiko is pretty good i like his work and most of the stuff i hear him in mm-hmm. dude Zeno robinson absolutely crushed it with junpei <laughs> yeah. as a character i was kind of just like eh on in the original uh, he's turned me around on him solely with his performance yeah, yeah. and that's that's always nice to hear is when, you know, the portrayal of someone turns you around on what could have been a mere character otherwise. You like to see it. Yeah. And there's a lot of scenes later on in the game that I'm really looking forward to seeing how, how they're handled with this cast. <laughs> a lot, a lot of good stuff to look forward to, Hunter. <laughs> I'm real excited oh. for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't wait. And then, uh, 
You didn't really get to hear much of Alex Lee yet, aside from, you know, the typical persona names. But, yeah. You know, you know how it goes. Mm. Uh, no, it is funny, though. Uh, the initial Persona Awakening scene, I felt compelled to go and look it up. I, I felt compelled to go and look the original one of those up, just because... I was I saw that it was like in the in engine graphics or whatever for reload and I was like this was probably an anime cutscene in the other game. Yeah, I think it was. It was. And I'll be honest, the the original version had a had more juice. I liked that one more. <laughs> but it's still really cool regardless. Oh yeah. All right. Ugh. So is it time we talk about the elephant in the room? The big 200-plus uh, floor elephant in the room. Oh, yes. It's the second best procedurally generated Tartarus I've ever been through. <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, the big boy tartar sauce? Uh, I mean, so far, it's not really been too horrible. Like, uh... I could see later if I get stuck in a position where I need to actually like grind out levels and whatnot, where I could get bored of it. But as far as um, just going through it, I'm like, oh, this isn't too bad. Most of the room, a lot of times, the floors are pretty small. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, it's like if I'm, and I haven't yet hit the point where I'm like, ah, yes, just find the stairs and do nothing else. I've always. I've always like looked around to the fullest extent that I can so far. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure if I'll have that same kind of uh, energy when I get, you know, 50 hours deep into the game. <laughs> but for now, it's fine. <laughs> I will say this, I do really love the aesthetics of Tartarus in this game. I think it looked it looks so much better than it did on the PS2, obviously. I've Man. But like even the second block that you go to where it's all like Do they change like visual themes when you move on? Yeah. Or does it look like the same? Okay, you cool. haven't seen the next block. No, I didn't go there yet, so I was just curious to know. Yeah. Yeah, the visual designs change every block. Okay, that's cool. Like barricade you get to. Dude, in the next block you get to, it looks so, it looks really cool. <laughs> That'll be a nice way to change the pace of a uh, how uh, just a visual change of pace there will be nice. Um, one thing I'm not super ex I I preferred the way of obtaining personas in five opposed to just kind of hoping you get them in the cards and the shuffle yeah. and all that. Shuffle time is something that I can't say I missed from four. <laughs> <laughs> it's like barely even shuffle time in this. It's just pick what you want. <laughs> yeah. It's not even like a mini game. Guess, I guess it's better than... I'd prefer to just pick what I want. But yeah. I still... You know. I thought that... I thought as a mechanic, the whole capture the personas or whatever, I thought that was a... Uh, it made me more uh, engaged with fighting things at least the first couple of times i yeah. saw them yeah I get whereas that. now it's just kind of like uh find the weakness and kill them <laughs> like oh it's just a turn-based rpg yeah and or like oh this one has wings and is casting wind i probably should hit it with lightning <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> this man the usual stuff once or twice <laughs> I've, I've played every I've played other JRPGs that follow the similar logic. Yeah, it, it's been. F uh, go on. Oh, oh, I was just gonna talk about. It has been funny though because you know some of these creature designs is like oh, right. You don't even look like you would be personas. So I definitely yeah. don't like that. That's what the thing that tipped me off that oh, it's gonna be more like four. Because it's like, it's not going to give me... I know what the goofy puddle persona is. It's You're, you're not right. it. So, it's, uh, so uh, I'm not going to be able to capture you. I'm just going to smack you. Yeah. That is the thing. Like, that, uh, you know, Obviously, Persona 3 and 4 were both made for the PS2. So a lot of assets got ended up getting retooled for, for P4. Yeah. 
Oh, um, so I never really minded Tartarus in the original. I don't know if this is just because I was a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon kid growing up and the, the procedural generation random floors never really bothered me. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. And honestly, like, I don't know. I'm prob- I think I'm definitely in the minority opinion here, but I think that the hatred Tartarus gets, I understand it, but I also think it's kind of overblown sometimes. I mean, yeah, like, uh, like I said, so far it hasn't offended me at all. Like, honestly, like, the whole notion reminds me of playing Dark Cloud back in the day, except I don't even have to find something specific and kill them to get the key to move on. I just find the exit. And yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I was just gonna say, it reminds me a lot uh, of, like, old-school JRPG dungeon design, where it's like, okay, how far can I push into this dungeon before I'm tapped out of resources? Yeah, which is always a fun... It's always a fun give-and-take that way, except... <laughs> or I think this was a more fun give-and-take when I was younger, because now, these days, it's just... I'm always going to go as far as it will let me and nothing will stop me. <laughs> I will not be stopped. You can't make me. I will I will limp to the end of this. I will limp to the barricade with 1 HP left. <laughs> I lost Junpei four floors back. You aren't stopping me. Oh man. Oh, but no. Um This game is also like Tartarus is also pretty generous with like giving you Back to the start teleport points if you need them. Oh, yeah, it feels like I was seeing those every couple of floors. Yeah. There was one change from FES to this game, which is that in FES, when you went back to the... If you, like, teleported back to the main floor, your party would get healed. But the trade-off was that you couldn't just keep climbing because your characters would get fatigued eventually. Uh Uh-huh. And then you'd just have to stop. Oh, I haven't encountered fatigue in this game yet, so I don't know if it's if it's real or not. But and they've been talking about it like it's a. It, they've been talking about that. They've tossed out the general term fatigue, mm. but it also hasn't manifested itself as like a status ailment or anything for me yet. So I don't know. Maybe they're just bluffing. Yeah, I don't know. Cause like it was pretty obvious in the original when you got fatigued. End of a battle, the camera would pan to your character, and they'd be like. <laughs> keeled over <laughs> Oof. <laughs> but now like and tartar is in this game it's honestly it's a lot more user friendly than it was in the original like the original was dungeon design on a budget this like f reload is reload tartarus is definitely like we know what we're doing now we get that this was a tedious thing in the original but we can't get rid of it for the remake, so let's just try and make it as bearable as possible. Yeah, for sure. Like like I said, it's not really bothered me yet. And I don't know, I don't suspect it will. Like, Mementos didn't even really bother me that much, mm-hmm. to be honest. So Any gripes with oh. the game so far? Uh, nothing, like, especially horrible. Oh, I guess the first 10 days, it was like, oh, who needs Morgana when you just have everybody telling you go to, to go to sleep? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, it, like the game got off to a very solid first start with the, uh, you know, uh, first monster that's attacking and all of this. And then it felt like I kind of hit the very quick lull right after that, where it's like, oh, now I'm just kind of stuck going to school and going to sleep <laughs> and it feels like all i'm doing <laughs> yeah but granted when they're telling when your party members are telling you to go to sleep in this game they're at least like you essentially moved into a dorm full of cultists it feels like you walk in the door you're greeted by a weird child in prison g- garbs and then yukari <laughs> shows up with a gun on her hip or what you think yeah. is a gun and you're like, okay, what? Yeah. Did I just join a cult? <laughs> Can I still oh, leave? Man. The uh, the room right or the scene right before the awakening where they're like monitoring him. I was like, 
weird. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, definitely, like, the start of the game is kind of, like, it's probably my biggest gripe with P3. It's, like I said, it's slow, and you do have to wait a while for things to start unfolding. But honestly, once you stick it out, I, it's my favorite story of, like I said, it's my favorite story of the modern Persona games. Yeah. I can't wait to see more of it. And like, it's for all of, for all of the complaining I just did. I don't think it's like, this isn't like Twilight Princess opening yeah. slow either. It's, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's still We're through not enough. In, yeah. It still threw enough intriguing things at me to keep my interest, even if it didn't start with, Oh, you're robbing a casino or, Oh, there's a dead body strung up on a roof somewhere. Yeah. In, in the, the first, first half hour, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely just, like, hoping that the mystery of the dark hour is enough to carry to carry a new player through until it starts, until everything starts to unravel. Yeah. <laughs> their, uh, their explanation for the dark hour is very funny. It's just, like, an hour of time that passes b before it actually takes over to a new day. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's funny. So this is where all the daylight savings time went. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the music in this game is pretty cool, too. I've been... <laughs> A lot I've of the been... music in this game has been re reworked or completely replaced from the original. <laughs> yeah, um... The Velvet Room arrangement even sounds slightly different. Like, uh, Persona 5 and 4 felt like you know, I was hearing the exact same audio track. Yeah. <laughs> Just on, in this in two different games. This one feels like it's been slightly uh, rearranged or re-recorded or something. Mm. But uh, um, the one, bo both the battle themes are real good so far. Dude, the, the uh, battle theme is so freaking good. <laughs> Yeah, I suspect it's the one that happens when you do the ambushes, right? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, that one's real good. I like the other one, too, just the way it starts with the beep, 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 however it goes. I'm like, oh, that's fun. And yeah, all the songs from the original have been retooled. It, basically, any song with lyrics in the original Hunter, it was just verse, chorus, repeat verse, repeat chorus, repeat verse, repeat chorus. Yeah, yeah. Just that, one chorus, one verse for the whole thing. Yeah, that's uh that's how it was with four too. Like Yeah. That might even be a generous description of four. I feel like half of four's music with words was just chorus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember very much about heartbeat heartbreak aside from <laughs> Heartbeat Heartbreak. <laughs> Dude, there was one song in that game. I th I think it was Signs of Love, the song that plays at the home at the Dojima oh. house. There's yeah. I swear, at one point in that song, there's a sound effect that sounds like there's a golf ball going into a hole. <laughs> I heard it once, and that's all I hear now. But yeah, all the other music is real good. That song that plays when you get to the uh, the beginning floor of Tartarus there, it's also like the PlayStation's menu song for the game. That one's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the other cool thing about Tartarus. Um, as you climb up into different blocks it starts to add more instruments to the the main tartarus theme oh that's fun are hearing the same song technically through the whole thing but it's like it's building on itself oh, i don't know if like there's that. a musical term for that or not uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly but it's like a rhythm games lately uh like i got the one doom rhythm game or whatever or the rhythm game it's like doom but oh metal musicians the point is, like, the more you, the better you do, the more the instrumentation will come in. Oh, eventually, yeah. You know, you get to the maximum and the words kick in and all of that. It's like a similar, similar kind of idea. Yeah. Any final thoughts on the game that I might have missed? Anything else that struck you in your playthrough so far? Um, nothing especially. Uh, it's been kind of weird seeing some of these uh, personas that were, like, the high level ones in the fifth game just is like Valkyrie is like a level 50 something persona. <laughs> and then I just got it at level 10. <laughs> so that was funny. I'm like, Oh, that's tickling. But, uh, you know, just the typical kind of they'll 
put things like that in different positions. John, whatever round you roll the yeah. system, but uh, um, yeah. Aside from that, no, I'm excited to see more of it. It's hilarious how ten hour about ten hours of a game, and you feel like you haven't seen that much of it. I know <laughs> that's uh. crazy. Oh, but dude, I'm so envious of you, dude. I wish this is a game I wish I could play for the first time again. Oh man. Uh. Yeah, I, yeah. I hope you enjoy your playthrough, dude, and I hope you keep me posted on what's going on. Oh, I'm sure I will. I'm sure we'll talk. I'm sure we'll do another episode on this subject at some point. I mean, I'd be down because, to do a spoiler yeah. cast with y'all. Yeah, and I'm sure Ethan wants to talk about the game at some point. <laughs> yeah. It was a shame he couldn't be here, too, but, yeah. you know, sometimes, sometimes life happens. <laughs> And, I mean, gonna ask it, but I think I know the answer. You'd Would you recommend it? Oh, certainly. If you like RPGs in general, or if you liked the other... If you like, if you played... If you got into the series with 5, like a lot of people did, give this a look, because it's more of what you'll like, and in a different flavor. This one's blueberry-flavored instead of strawberry. Yeah. Got like city hip hop instead of jazz. <laughs> oh, and obviously, world's biggest Persona Three fan right here. That's not true, but that's the title I'm going to claim for myself. Obviously, <laughs> go play it. Yeah. If I was able to convince Ethan to play the original PS2 version, it this game is so worth your time, dude. It's so good. Yeah. And I'm real glad that it's been modernized and more people are going to get to play it. How long do you think it goes before we get one of these for four? Because I think it's bound to happen. I think we're going to get Persona 6 first. And then yeah. they'll probably try Persona 4 remake. Because I, yeah. think, I think the idea is that they were just doing this as a test for what they want to do for persona 6 yeah that makes sense fully voice acted social links and working in more in-engine cutscenes. ah yes it's like the <laughs> humorously it's like the reverse of how the resident evil series been has been doing it lately where the test bed for the remakes has been the numbered entries that have come in between <laughs> <laughs> Like, it, it sounds silly, but, like, Resident Evil 7's whole UI and stuff is what they used for 2 and 3. And oh, then, my God. Then, then all of what they were doing in Resident Evil 8 pretty much carried over to 4 Remake. It's very funny. Huh. But, uh, yeah. I, but that'll be nice, too, because having a newer version of 4, even though that one's a little more readily um, available these days than three was and it's not quite as it's not quite as uh rent asunder as far as all of the things worth getting about it yeah but i think, I think you know g getting a similar kind of visual upgrade and stylistic treatment would be nice though mm -hmm. but yeah I'd, of, of the two ps2 games i definitely feel like three was the one that was more more hungry for a remake than four is yeah. Since you couldn't even control your party members in the original. <laughs> it's very perplexing that you get to a game in 2006 and decide that that's the control scheme you're going to go with. You know, that's what they decided. And you can turn party control off and, and reload, too. You yeah, can go yeah, back to how it was, dude. And get the true Persona 3 experience. I thought about doing it. <laughs> I thought it'd be funny, but then I also yeah. decided I like my sanity too much, and baton <laughs> pass is a really good feature. It is a good feature. I'm glad that that... I, it's perplexing to me that it took, like, eight floors of the dungeon for them to be like, ah, oh, yes, you can do this now. Mm -hmm. I was like... I mean, it was never, like, a necessity. It just would have been... Well, no, it just makes, it just makes life easier, is all. I've like every every time I fought something, I'm like, why can't I do this yet? <laughs> yeah, and it's probably just like they didn't want to throw too much at you too quickly. <sighs> Dude, I'm in yeah. the second. I'd finished the second block, and I was still getting tutorials. 
Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Zero called good. me on the phone once and was like, hey, do you know what status conditions are? If you hit them with electricity, they might get zapped. And I'm like, oh, neat. I'm glad this is Thank like you. a 2% chance of happening. I tried to see if, like, uh, I got the one. I froze a guy at one point. And I tried to see if it did, like, the technical thing, like, Royal had. And it did not do that because I tried burning him or whatever after that and it didn't work. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, beans, I just undid your status. <laughs> Oops. It's another. Just another quick combat thing they added. They put in the light and dark spells from Persona 5. Were those not around? No. In the original, and also in Persona 4, they were uh, light and dark were just insta-kill moves. No. Oh. They didn't have, like, deal damage flavors. Hmm. I guess I never noticed in 4. They were but... bad. Yeah. Insta-kill moves typically aren't great because they never hit... They really only hit if the enemy was weak to it. It's nice that they brought that forward, because, you know, I feel like... I feel like that's where most of the Death Arcana stuff lives, is the dark damage. Yeah. So, uh, it'll be nice to... Uh, I saw I saw Matador's portrait in the compendium, and for some reason he's strength in this game, and that was weird. What? I was like, excuse me? What? I'm like, that's not what you are. <laughs> you're a skeleton of course you go in the death category <laughs> hunter loves his matador it's, my, it's one of my favorite designs he looks so cool he does look pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> but yeah persona 3 reload fantastic game we've only yeah. played about 10 hours of it but man it's fantastic yeah it's pretty great I'm sure that like, I don't imagine that there's any way that they're going to fumble the bag enough to make me go, ah, I didn't like that. <laughs> I mean, not including the answer in the base game and giving it back to us as DLC later is kind of shitty, but that's beside the point. But I don't know what that is. I so. also don't know what that is. <laughs> See? So so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And you know what? Everything I've heard about it, I mean, it makes it sound like it's not really worth my time. <laughs> so... I mean, when it comes out, I'll buy it, because I hate myself, but also, like, in FES, the problem with the answer was that you didn't have party control, for starters, and for two, the answer, for some stupid reason, was locked on hard mode. You could not change well. that, so that's why I never bothered with it. Hmm. You know, on a modern version, I'll give it a try. Modern version, where I think it lets you adjust the difficulty whenever you want. Yeah. Unless you pick the hardest difficulty and then you can't change it. Oh. You can also do like rats. save rewinds. I've never I didn't mess with that yet. They were telling me about that, but I didn't feel like reading it. Yeah. So. I'm like, that's not something just, I'm gonna bother with. I just figured it probably meant like, oh, if you get in a position where you screwed yourself, you could go back to like seven days or whatever, like with the deadlines for the other games, you know? Yeah. I assume that's what it was, but if that's not how it works, then joke's on me for skipping the tutorial. <laughs> I mean, I also probably won't bother with it, so... Yeah, exactly. Who needs it? It's a life sim. I'm gonna live with the decisions I made. Yeah. Been answering all the questions people ask me honestly, even if it means I'm only gonna get one little ding on their social thing. Sometimes that's how you gotta play it. Yeah. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for us for today. Bit of a shorter episode, but, you know, it's just the two of us. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Next week, we're going to be back with who knows what. I don't know. I don't think, have we thought that far ahead, Hunter? Uh, we might have, but I don't know if we decided anything concrete yet. Cool. Well, join us next week when I'll be just as surprised as you are for what Stop the right there, Kyle. Is. It's time for me to give some of my impressions. You know, uh, I have lived by the fact that the HDR podcast is six times longer than a Hideo Kojima trailer, and I'm not going to stop right here, boys. Uh, so here I am. Uh, I've been sick this past weekend. That's why I wasn't in the episode. I was throwing up while they were recording. Uh, but I thought I'd give some quick impressions of the... Uh, game while i can just because i wanted to really just talk about it really 
uh, I've already recorded one of these and then I lost it because my computer crashed. So that was fantastic. So I'm going to try and do it again. Uh, so if I, my voice sounds rough, it's because one, I've been ill and two, because I'm having to do this all again and remember what I said because the first time was perfect. I'm really annoyed, but it's all good. Um, so yeah, I've put about 17, 18 hours of uh, time into Persona 3 Reload, which is a bit longer than the other two. Like I say, I am off this week, but also because of illness and all that jazz. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we'll get through it. But yeah, I've been really enjoying my time with Persona 3 um, right now. It's really hard. I'm trying to remember what order I talked things in because, like I say, I've lost a recording, which kind of sucks. But uh, I just think there was a couple of things that Hunter and Cow didn't really touch on that I'd like to. Um, some other things here and there. Uh, but overall, my impressions are pretty positive. I'm having a good time. Obviously, I'm the lead reviewer on this one, so you can expect my review either in the next week or so. Basically, it was supposed to be this week because I'm ill. Uh, we'll see how that works out. But yeah, um, I think it's fantastic. I think this is a glow up of a PS2 game that I already thought was pretty good, but uh, this has really solidified it as just an excellent, excellent video game to me and I'd highly recommend it. So if you just wanted the TLDR of my thoughts, there you go. But if you'd like me to go into a bit more detail, then let's get straight into it. And I think the real reason that this game has had such a glow up, a lot of people say it's because of the combat and stuff like that. Let's ignore that for a second. Um, what I really want to talk about is the social aspect of it, the live sim aspect of it has had such a glow up. It's fantastic, man. And not only from the wonderful voice acting, I mean, the voice acting in this game is fantastic. As they've mentioned, Mitsuru, you can hardly tell us how to change your voice actor. Uh, Allegra Clock is brilliant. Um, Yukari is a voice that in the trailers wasn't hitting with me, but now that uh, I've played it, I'm honestly thinking, you know, I think you might be better than uh, the, in the original. And that's saying something. I think you're fan fantastic uh and all the others junpei uh, akihiko uh most of them 90 percent of them i think are better than the original i think some of them do miss i do miss some of their quirky kind of uh performances um i think the chairman in particular i think there's a bit of a lack of his quirk i think it's taken a lot more seriously this time and i don't know if i like it as much but um everybody else it's fantastic and this matches perfectly with the social links i know hunter mentioned the elderly couple which i think is a fantastic uh social link it's brilliant um which is just ma made so much better with voice acting like when you're reading it in your head there's only so much you can do there's only so many things that you can apply with the way that you uh, portray it in your head and uh, I think having voice actors dedicated for the entirety of social links just works so well in adding to characters that didn't really have much going for them. I think it just it adds so much, man. And I mean, I think the there's so many standout social links in this game um even ones that i hated in the original persona 3 uh, are better in this game because of social uh, the social links being voice acted like joe ziegler playing uh, kenji not a fan of kenji still not a huge fan of kenji but having a good voice and a good portrayal really does add to that social link quite a bit uh, i'm quite a fan two that i think really have started to shine bright though that i didn't really pay much attention to in the original are yuko um I think Yuko, uh, the team captain, the sports team captain, fantastic performance. Like, honestly, it's turned it in from, like, a C tier, B tier social link to me to, like, an A. It's fantastic. Her voice uh, actor is brilliant and has added so much personality to that character. I think it's brilliant, and uh, I'm really loving that one so far. And also Maiko, the uh, the little girl who's going through, her, whose parents are going through a divorce that you kind of help distract and act as an older sibling for her. Gosh, I didn't care for that social link in the slightest in base P3, but it's that Nanako effect of having the voice acting there. You kind of grow that attachment where you're like, oh, you know, divorce is shit. And I hate that you're going through that. I'm so sorry. And you're just like, ah. Oh gosh i feel horrible and uh, obviously that leads into the guy the, the sick guy uh, the guy who's not very well you could say i don't want to spoil too much in case hunter listens to this bit hello hunter i am recording this with you in mind 
But his performance as well, the little bit that I've seen of him, also fantastic. I feel like it's turning underrated social links just to another level, man. I think they're really fantastic. Um, and I think what this game does better than the original is kind of get that balance right with the social systems. Where before it was like nighttime was for Tartarus, you could do nothing. You could get a couple, you could go to karaoke or go to the arcade and get a couple of social stat increases or yada yada yada. But this game, it's like, no, you've got all the shops so you can go and get food and that can all do your stats as well. You've still got karaoke, you've still got the arcade games, you've got all that jazz. But you've also got these um, events that you can do with your other party members, the guys that do not have social links. I've done one with Junpei, done one with Akihiko. They're both fantastic and they're fully voice acted and they just add, they don't add, not, not necessarily that the characters are underdeveloped, but they just add so much more just having to be able to hang out with Akihiko and see what he goes about on his day to day life or hanging out with Junpei and just getting some more information on that or even things like revision sessions for being fully voice acted these side events all these side events are fully voice acted and I think it adds so much to the overall experience and the quality of the product just having these voices there um just being able to interact with all these characters in so many different ways I think is brilliant um and just adding like, like I say they just added so many little things that just make a difference like the shared computer in the uh in the main office so you can buy computer programs and stuff like that and there's just like so these link with characters in a way and it's like there's so much interesting stuff going on that there's a lot of fun to be had really um elizabeth's requests and stuff come back but they've got less the deadlines are less as uh less um shit shall we say uh, to put it into a polite way um <laughs> but they're you know they are they are very well paced and you don't have to go to Yukari on a certain day to get her resin. You can go at any point and she'll just give it you and that's fantastic. I really like that. I think those things work really well. Uh, I think the social systems in this game just are nailed. Dude. They absolutely aced them and I'm so happy that they did because it's just a fantastic, um, just a fantastic representation of a, a classic PS2 game really in such a enormous way um i'll talk about tartarus for a little bit um i still think tartarus is a grind fest i don't think the change in scenery is as uh <laughs> stimulating as kyle suggests in the podcast but we'll have to agree to a disagree with that i think the second floor of tartarus the second area of tartarus was miserable to go through i did not like the way it weaves and all that jazz i think it's not necessarily well, miserable is the wrong word i think it's just it it's very samey and i think that um there are things that get added later on that I don't necessarily want to ruin in this podcast that do add to it and do make things more engaging. Um, but the, it's a very much a slow, it's a, it's a slow grind at the start. Um, there are some benefits, obviously, uh, as Kyle mentioned, you do not get healed up when you go back to the bottom. There is no fatigue system, guys. I'm happy to report there is no fatigue system. I've been in Tartarus for well over three hours and there's no there's no fatigue system. Uh, the clock that we used to save in the main uh, in the main hall of Tartarus, uh, you can now use star fragments and they're not called star. They're, they're something fragments. I can't remember what they are, but they're fragments that you can spend seven and you get your whole team gets replenished SP and HP, which is pretty nice if you want to stay and do a grind at Tartarus, which is nice. Um, obviously, the persona systems like the summoning and all that jazz is very um, much Persona Five coded in the way that things gradually unlock for you and all that jazz uh, it's very intuitive it works rather well um i agree shuffle time isn't fantastic i think it could be better uh but for the most part everything feels really um good to play and i'm having a real good time with it um tartarus can get repetitive i think the idea then what they haven't the guys didn't mention earlier was that tartarus the way this time around around yeah, this time around instead of just uh, refreshing every time you go to a new floor it now only refreshes um every day so the same if you traverse the same floors they'll be the same every time which is great because it means if you do use an exit teleport you can teleport your way back up pretty quickly um worst case and for me i could grind golden hands pretty easily with this method because uh, you could just move from floor to floor and then you can see on the menu if there's a gold hand and you can run and grab it it's pretty great I'm a big fan of that, really. Um, so, yeah, I think gameplay as a whole, uh, when it comes to Tartarus, is better if you've played Persona 5. 
and you were fine with mementos is basically mementos on steroids basically um but i think for the most part you'll be pretty fine with it um really my final thing before i um wrap it up that i wanted to bring up really was the soundtrack i know these guys touched on it but i think controversial opinion i know there's been some back and forward on is the new soundtrack any good is it you know is is it worse is it better and controversial opinion i think the soundtrack's better i think it's fantastic i think the uh the return of lotus juice and him doing some great stuff with these songs like they mentioned multiple verses and all that jazz and making things feel different is fantastic and the new singer has really grown on me um when i first heard want to be close i really was kind of blown back dude shivers was sent down my spine i loved it i think it's fantastic mass destruction yeah the chorus isn't hit as well but i think the extra verse and all that jazz the extra orchestration really adds to it so uh i'm not complaining on that one in that regard um and you know i'm surprised these two didn't bring it up back but call your nights the new um the new nighttime song is incredible it's like top three persona three songs for me it's brilliant it's fantastic the new battle theme is fantastic but this call your night my god brilliant absolutely brilliant um if you haven't already go and listen to it just next time you're out at night because i know you might be zip zapping tping everywhere getting everything done real quick but when you hear uh lotus juice's uh, vocal performance on it the sing the the bridge the uh, singing that he does oh it's so good it's fantastic i love it uh it is a fantastic fantastic uh song and there's so many good songs that they've added um they're all pretty brilliant to be honest so yeah overall my thoughts and opinions are glowing of this i heavily recommend it if you haven't uh, checked it out yet obviously 70 dollars some may ask is that a bit steep for the amount of hours you get out of a persona game i don't ever think that uh that should really come into question but hey you can always wait six 12 months it'll be super cheap but then you can pick it up and have as good a time as you would right now so yeah definitely go and pick it up if you haven't uh because i'd highly recommend it oh it's very good i'm having the time of my life it's a good time good time but yeah with that I'm gonna leave it. I think um, <laughs> we are now as long as uh, well. No, now it's six times as long for the Hideo Kojima trailer. So I feel pretty confident in wrapping it up. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening, guys. Like I said, we don't know what's happening next week, but uh, we'll come back. We'll talk about something else. I'm sure. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that Death Stranding trailer. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, thanks for Kyle and Hunter for backing uh, me up and recording while I was throwing up. That was pretty nice of them. Uh, and yeah hopefully everything comes out in the edit pretty fine because there was a lot of nightmares when it came to recording this but uh oh well uh we'll we'll get through it and we'll make it up to you some guys somehow i'm sure but yeah thanks everyone so much for listening guys we'll be back same time next week for more but until then have an awesome week and yeah we'll see you next time bye toodaloo